I'm Elizabeth Thiel, uh, MD-PhD, uh, Director of Pediatric Epilepsy at the Mass General Hospital. I'm also Director of the Herscott Center for Tuberous Sclerosis Complex at the Mass General Hospital in Boston and a Professor of Neurology at Harvard Medical School. I've been a child pediatric epileptologist now for 20 years and it's been very exciting over the past 10 to 15 years to see the number of new anticonvulsant medications that have become available. So the number of treatment options we have for children is many more than when I started. Um, but the frustration for all of us, the families living, the children living with epilepsy and people taking care of them, is even with those new medications, we still have a large portion of children um, whose seizures are not controlled and remain in refractory. So there continues to be a big unmet need uh, for effective treatments in epilepsy. And over the past several years, there's been increasing anecdotal reports. Um, once medical marijuana became available in first California and later Colorado, that marijuana extracts, medical marijuana, can be effective in treating epilepsy in many children. Uh, several years ago, a kind of GW Pharma was identified as a company from the UK who has been very interested in cannabinoids and um, for many, many years and had been doing preclinical work on cannabinoids and epilepsy. Uh, when this kind of need and kind of GW met, a group of us got together with GW to discuss, you know, kind of looking and seeing, would cannabidiol be a safe and effective and tolerated treatment? So they started then, or we started then, uh, what was called the Expanded Access Program, which was really a novel idea, but in retrospect, a really smart idea. Uh, there were five academic centers got together with GW and agreed that we would all put in an IND, Investigational New Drug Application, to the DEA and FDA, asking to put children on this medication. Um, and each of the five centers was granted permission to put 25 children on, and those 25 were some of our most highly refractory epilepsy patients. Had been on many medications, most of them had been on over 10, 12, 14, 16. Many of them had had epilepsy surgery, many were on diet, and many had the vagus nerve stimulator, and yet they were still having uncontrolled, typically daily seizures. Um, and what we found and the experience with the expanded access program was really encouraging. Uh, that there was a significant reduction in seizures in many of the children. Uh, we also found that overall the Epidiolex or CBD was pretty well tolerated. Uh, there were some side effects, but I think many of those side effects we learned and now know how to manage um, were due to medication interactions. Uh, and so based on the expanded access data, which was open labeled, not randomized controlled trial, I think that really encouraged GW Pharma then to proceed with applications to the FDA to pursue an indication, uh, first in Dravet syndrome, subsequently in Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, uh, and also now in tuberous sclerosis complex. Uh, those are epilepsies that all people that have those disorders, the majority of them have highly refractory epilepsy. So now they have sponsored two randomized controlled trials in Dravet syndrome. The results of the first have been released and positive. Uh, and they've sponsored two trials in Lennox Gastaut syndrome, and the results of both of those trials are now released, and both of those trials were positive. Uh, so again, very encouraging that what was seen in the randomized controlled trials really pretty much mirrored what we had seen in the expanded access program. The tuberous sclerosis complex um, trials near and dear to my heart, since that's a big focus of my work, um, are now enrolling, and I'm hoping that we'll be as effective there. Based on the randomized controlled trials, I think GW is preparing and they've been talking with the FDA about submitting for approval next year. Um, and I believe they're planning on submitting both at the same time for an approval for Lennox-Gastaut and for Dravet syndrome. Uh, so I think the epilepsy community is hopeful that the medication will be approved. I'm very hopeful it be approved because my patients who haven't been able to get an Epidiolex and many patients in the United States who have not had access to that have been using different formulations of artisanal medical marijuana preparations and those are really have significant complications and difficulties. A main complication is just variability from batch to batch even from the same distributor. A main complication that's been pointed out now in several different studies is really consistency in what is truth in labeling. Uh, many products that are noted to be high CBD when analyzed are found to have no CBD. Um, a big concern also is what is not being tested in these compounds are pesticides, heavy metals, other contaminants that could have significant negative impact on the health of a child. So in my ideal world, the FDA will really recognize that this is a problem. There are many people who could benefit from CBD, many people who want access to it, uh, and that soon we'll have that as a product available for many more of our patients.